Hello, if you are in year 11 and you are watching this around about the time that I release it, then you've got about a week to go until your first maths GCSE exam. If you're doing Edexcel, that is the non-calculator paper. So I thought it'd be useful to do a quick video on some last minute revision, some key must know question types that I think are gonna come up in that first non-calculator paper. Now, I don't know what's gonna come up. No one can predict really what's gonna come up, but I've looked at lots of past papers for Edexcel and I've put them all into a spreadsheet and I've run the numbers and there are some question types that just keep coming up again and again and again. So I think if you're a bit panicked and it's kind of last minute and you think, oh, I've got a week to go, I'm not sure what to do, or if you're totally on top of everything, but you just feel like a little extra push to kind of get you to that finish line of, of the first paper, then this video will be really useful for you. So there are five key question types that I'm gonna be going through. And I, I want to sort of state again, I don't know what's gonna be in the exam, and there's nothing to guarantee that just because they keep coming up year after year that they're gonna come up again. But if, if you need a little bit of focus for your revision for this last week, then I think these question types are gonna be a very good starting point for you. So the first one, negative and fractional indices. This has come up in all four of the last four Edexcel higher tier non-calculator GCSE papers. So definitely worth practicing. And the kinds of skills, well the skills that you're gonna need are to evaluate these sorts of things. 81 to the power of a half, for example. So evaluate just means to, to write them without those little index numbers, you know, the powers of. So to be able to evaluate them, work them out um, when they've got a fraction, or a negative. So when something is to the power of a half, it just means you take the square root of that. So 81 to the power of a half is nine, because the square root of 81 is nine. If it was to the power of a third, that would be the cube root. So what you're gonna to have to do with these as well is deal with ones when they are negative. For example, 81 to the power of negative one half. And to evaluate those, you take the reciprocal of the positive one. So 81 to the power of a half was nine, and we find the reciprocal of that. And the way to do that, if you think of nine as a fraction, so nine over one, and you just flip that fraction upside down so it becomes one ninth. So 81 to the power of negative a half is one ninth. And then the last thing you might have to do is things like uh, to the power of two thirds. Let's say 27 to the power of two thirds. All you have to do there is find the cube root because it's got that three at the bottom. So the cube root of 27, which is three, and then because it's got that two on the top, you then square that, so three squared, which is nine. And the final skill you will need is to do that when they are in brackets. So I go through an example of one of those in the batch of questions that I've got with model answers. As I say, the link is in the description. Right, so the next one is to do with drawing the equation of a line. And this has come up three out of the last four papers, although the, var the marks have varied actually. So there's been two, four, five. So it just depends how they, how they give you the question. And the key skills for this are you need to be able to find the gradient of a line. So don't forget, if you've got your equation in the form y equals mx plus c, in other words, y equals you know, some x's and then a number at the end, then the gradient is just the coefficient of x, how many x's you've got, in other words. But it, your equation must be in that form, the y equals mx plus c. If it's not, you're gonna have to rearrange it so that it is, if you want to use that to find the gradient. So, you need to be able to find the gradient. You need to understand that two parallel lines will have the same gradient. So if two lines have the same gradient, they will be parallel. You also need to be able to find the gradient of a perpendicular line. So the gradient of a perpendicular line is just the negative reciprocal of the starting line. So if your first line has a gradient of two, the perpendicular line will have a gradient of negative a half, because half is the reciprocal of two, and then you just change the sign, so it becomes negative a half. So that is the second skill. The third one, and this has been in three of the last four papers, is all to do with direct and inverse proportion, is this kind of question. And it's those ones where you will need to form an equation using the letter k. All right, so if it's direct proportion, it will be y equals kx, k times x. If it's inversely proportional, it's k divided by x. y is equal to k divided by x. But the example you get might be x squared, or x cubed, or the square root of x. But the beginnings of your equation will always be the same. y equals k times 
whatever your question is. So the fourth one is to do with algebraic proofs. Now, we deal with algebraic proofs in different areas of math. The ones I'm talking about specifically are these kinds of questions. And they can seem quite intimidating, but I think there are a couple of things to bear in mind that could make them a bit easier for you. The first thing is that very often they involve brackets, and really the first thing you're going to have to do is to expand those brackets. That's very often the first step. Just expand it all and then simplify it. Gather up all your like terms, right? And even if you're still stuck and you don't get any further, well, you've got yourself some marks just for doing that. So the next part will be for simplifying it all. And then the final bit very often is you're asked to prove that this gives you an even number or a number that is a multiple of four or something like that. And if you're asked to do that, all you have to do is to then factorize, taking either two out, if you're proving that it's an even number, or four or five, or you know whatever it is that they've asked you to prove that it's a multiple of, okay? So expand the brackets, simplify, and then very often you're gonna to have to do some factorizing as well. So the final thing is not a question type in itself, but it's a particular skill that comes up time and time again. And I've already mentioned it actually, it's expanding brackets, but and also factorizing actually. So those two things, they come up in so many different questions. So if you can't expand brackets, that's definitely something to have a bit of a practice on between now and the exam. Same with factorizing. Right, that is it. So as I've said, I don't know what's gonna come up in the exam. Who knows, maybe none of that stuff, I would be amazed if none of that stuff came up. But I'm just warning you, I can't predict what's gonna come up. But if you need a bit of focus for the next week, this. I would say it's a great place to start. And as I've mentioned already, mathskitchen.com, my website, it's all free. There's a link down below and there are lots of resources for you to practice. It's all interactive, so you can answer a question, get it marked instantly, see the model answer if you got it wrong or if you need a bit of help. That is it. If I don't see you before next week, good luck with the exam. I hope it goes really, really well and I will be back after that first exam with another video.